the power of sight is by me. Fate winds us all together and cannot easily be undone. To the King Polydectes, host to many, a hero will be made, and you will be forever remembered by his commission to your side. To Perseus, light of Zeus, son of Danae, you will meet a flower by the sea. You will save one woman, and one woman alone. And to the poor child, Athena holds your destiny like a jewel. She may give it freely to you, if you have the skill to ask. These are the words of the fates. May they resonate with you beyond the hubris that twists freely through your <laughs> Who is it? <coughs> Who calls to me? Papa? No, Mother, it is me. Medi, I have some soup for you. Papa? Medi, where is Papa? I've made him a new tunic. Mother, you must eat. You need your strength. Uh, <laughs> I cannot. Papa. Selenea. Papa. Medi, let us speak outside. Medi, how many days now since you've heard of your father's ship being sunken at sea? Seven? Ten? It, it, it matters not. My father is a strong man. As long as there is light half the day, there is hope. Eddie, you must be honest. Only Poseidon himself could have survived what happened in that ocean. And besides, I know Selene has been ill, but she deserves to know what has happened to her husband and that he awaits her in the underworld. You speak of my mother as if you have already placed coins upon her eyes for the boatman. She still lives, and I will advise her of my father when I'm sure of it being the right thing to say. If you cannot say it, then I will. No, you mustn't! You are merely a child. In time, you will come to know my wisdom on these matters. <laughs> Zelenea, I come with news of your husband. Papa? Oh, Papa. Has he returned? No. Oh, my dear. It's been so many months since he's spoken. Oh, Papa. Oh, I see him. Hello, Papa. We've missed you. We've missed you so. Oh, Papa. <laughs> Helena, if it is your husband you see, it, it is merely his spirit. For he has passed into death. He awaits you in the underworld, his ship sunk at sea with no survivors. Oh. I have known this. I have known this since he came to me eight nights ago, wearing the same clothes as when we met cheering for me as he did before he learned to love the sea above all else. <laughs> oh, do not tell Maddie. Do not. It will break her. Oh, she never did complain. <laughs> Papa. Selenea?
Let the girl inside. Mother, what have you done? No, no, murderer, what have you done? My child, is this really so unexpected to you? Your mother has been ill for the better part of four months now. And, and you must recover quickly, else you starve awaiting your dead father's return. Get out! Give her one day to mourn and prepare for the funeral. Then bring her to me in the monastery. Where are you off to? To my uncle's, where I will be taken in. If I must go to the monastery, I will simply die. I have my orders, and I must see them through. Well then release me from this life and spare the trip. I will do you no harm. I heard a noise in the back of this home, and it may be some time before I return. Stay safe, Medi. I would think of nothing else. No messages today, good friend. None today, none yesterday. Nothing to do these days leading up to the Lucian mysteries. Just everyone's too busy for adventure. And yet here we have a young maiden and a young boy together on my shore, yet apart. What is she casting into my waves anyway? A message for someone distant. It does seem like a message. I hope it isn't urgent. This scene isn't the best delivery service. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not. But I have an idea. Why not I send a blast to that girl and cause her to tumble? <laughs> Let's see if that boy has a bit of chivalry or not. Do it. <laughs> what a sudden gust. Are you here? It, it seems the sea wants these shells to return. Fate said I'd meet a flower by the sea, but... Did not mention it being so brief. My, my, my. What a lovely maiden you let fly away from you. That opportunity does not come about once every day. Poseidon, I think this is 
the boy Perseus. Made by Zeus's golden ring. <laughs> I am, but I do not know my father in any way except for stories. What a pity! <laughs> If you had an ounce of Zeus in your blood, that girl would be kneeling at your feet at this very moment. But she is still visible on the dunes. You should follow her. She is clearly stricken by grief over matters I do not know. It is best I leave her be. I visit this beach quite frequently. Perhaps the fates will see to it that our paths will cross again. Only time will tell. If the gods had that much patience, I wouldn't need winged shoes. Let her go then! <laughs> but don't be surprised when someone else takes your wasted opportunity. I also visit the sea daily. I live here! <laughs> I have heard of your scandals. It is never too late to abandon them, especially for a girl in mourning. But you will do as the gods do, I am sure. <laughs> I will indeed. I must take my leave of you both. My mother awaits. <laughs> this adventure does not end here, dear Hermes. Come and let us be the guiding hand of fate once more. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Mighty Athena, hear me. I beg of you, hear my prayer. Show yourself to me. I have nothing left but hope. Welcome, child. You bring gifts, I see, no doubt to please me, the great Athena. Yes, merciful goddess. I come to you in my time of need to plead to you for help, for guidance. For I have nothing since the passing of my mother and nothing gained from the absence of my father. Merciful goddess, perhaps you have not in fact heard of me, for I have been known as many things, merciful being none of them. I know you well. It is for my father's love of the war that I have lost all I had, his love of you. With every statue and amulet he served to show your pretty face and never time to spare a moment for my own. It seems you have great reason to issue venom upon me. No, my lady, my goddess. I do not bestow hatred upon your beauty, for you did not wish it. I do not harbor ill for your warring heart, for you did not build it for yourself. You are the great and powerful goddess Athena, and I, a mere mortal of the land and sea, just wishing to understand my father and the men who took him from me. I see. You do not seek pity, then? To seek pity, you must feel it. And you do not harbor ideas of revenge? Revenge is just foolishness and envy, of which I have none. I am your orphan child, and with hope you may find space in your home for me. I cannot offer you apology for your mother or your father, for I have none. That is not a gift I seek. I come bearing gifts, and only requested audience with your great temple. And what gifts does one with nothing bring to bear? These shells, stolen from Poseidon's sea, to serve as symbols of your victory over him, that you may look upon them and have joy. You should stay far from the sea during times like these. Poseidon is not known for his charity when a storm is brewing and I am not known for charity when he calls out for my anger. You can be my child. I will allow you to stay. If you must serve the temple, serve it under my watchful eye as an honor to your father who served me to his death. Thank you, good goddess. What do you propose we do at this time, Perseus? There is much to be done, and I do not mind the work. Now, run along with your friends and do whatever young boys do with um. their... Young men do with their time. I recall the days we spent walking along the shore, skipping small stones amongst the waves. Come with me and let us be those people, even again for just a day. That is a memory I am glad to revisit. But uh, the oracle said your fate was to find a flower on the shore of the sea. 
And I doubt any flowers would be found if your mother was with you. Revisiting memories today, are we? None of which you played a part. Well then, they are not likely to be worth remembering if I did not have a part in them. We, we were merely reminiscing. And neglecting your duties in this hovel you call a home? How is a man to have a gathering in this mess? Well, well perhaps you can lift a hand to serve yourself. And perhaps you should take care to whom you speak, Perseus, the bastard son of Zeus. I own the land you stand upon as a small part of my kingdom here on this island. It's more than a kingdom to be a king. Perseus, you should not speak to Polydectes in this way. He has given us more than we could hope for and a stable home. Mother, you are well aware I do not approve of Polydectes to become your husband. One should not be able to buy their way into my mother's heart. Son, you cut me to the core with those words. I am not that woman. I know, Mother. That is why it hurts me so to see it. You have said enough! Leave and collect your words as you go. Leave! And do not come back until you have corrected your misguided anger! I will go. But I can make no promises as to the nature of my anger when I'm guided back to this home. Who goes there? Oh, it is you again. It is as if the speech is your home. I'm sorry, I did not mean to startle you. I see. Was it your plan to stand and watch me in secret, or was it ever your plan to make yourself known to me? I did not have a plan at all. Every man has a plan. Particularly when they spot a woman working alone. But, rest assured, I am not alone. For the goddess Athena is my guardian. Be mindful of that as you develop this plan you claim not to have. I am no threat to you, sweet maiden. I was simply out walking off a foul conversation with a foul man, and I happened upon you. And are you still foul then? No, sweet maiden. I have been distracted. Pleasantly so. Pleasantly so? That has yet to be determined. It already has been determined. It's only a matter of how pleasant. So there are degrees of pleasantry to this encounter. It is beginning to sound like a plan. I have heard of plans and they went much this way. You certainly are challenging. Beautiful in a way I have never seen or heard of, but with a rigid determination. We have not been properly introduced. I am Perseus. You can call me goddess. <laughs> but are you? Does it matter? Any man who wishes to entangle me in his plan should refer to me as goddess. Otherwise, he has underestimated me and does not deserve my time. Well then, good goddess. No one said I was good. Well then, beautiful raven-haired goddess, thief of my longing heart, I, Perseus, present myself to thee. A bit gaudy, I say. Goddess would have sufficed. May I ask, what is the name to which the goddess I speak? I am known as Medi. The goddess Medi. I wish to walk with you and forget my cares for a moment. I wish to recall days I spent on this very beach without a care. I wish to ease through this day in this way with you. Do you accept? You can keep me company. And may I also hold your hand so that you may guide me on your favorite path? And so the sneaky plan makes itself known. Sometimes the best plan unfolds as it goes along. Perseus, I ask you this sincerely. What is it that you seek in life? Is it glory, money, the spoils of war? I only seek the love of a beautiful woman. At this moment, perhaps. At any moment. I am the son of Danae, a woman whose beauty is overwhelming to the gods. My grandfather locked her away in an open cage to prevent her from being courted by men for fear that I would be born and fulfill the oracle's prophecy that his grandson would be his death. The mighty god Zeus, looking down upon her and seeing her beauty, 
rained, cold and sunlight, and she became pregnant. Ever since that day, my mother has mourned that she was never shown love and has longed for it in the worst of men. I've tried to keep her from this fate, but always fail. That, if a woman were mine, she shall know it and feel it and live it without question. Our love will fill the skies with stars at night and light during the day. She shall not want for being loved. My father was a good man, but his love of the war came first and was eventually his undoing. And my mother died a broken woman, never knowing a love like you described. The goddess Medi, who developed strength among the storm. I would be so lucky as to share my plan with a girl so perfect as you. Not perfect, but nearly so. If there's any imperfection, I cannot see it. It can't be seen. I can't feel it. It can't be felt. Or sense it in any other way. Then perhaps you have been blinded and fooled. And then a blind fool I shall be for all eternity, as long as you remain here with me. <clears throat> Hermes. Perseus. What brings you? I bring a message by order of Zeus. Your mother requests your assistance back at home. Zeus? He has not made any effort for me since my birth. What could he possibly want? I was not told. My message was simple. Such ill timing. You must go. Your mother must be loved. And so shall you. Such haste, my dear Perseus. We have only just met. When I meet a flower, I know it to be a flower. And when I meet a thorn, I know it to be a thorn. And what if the flower turns out to be with thorns? Then I shall be cut but I will be cut with joy. I will come for you. Sweet, beautiful maiden, was it not you I saw living at the temple of Athena? It was. You have the favor of the gods, sweet maiden. <laughs> I can see why that boy Perseus was struck by the side of you. I, I beseech you, mighty Poseidon, king of the sea, that the hour is late and I must return to the service of Athena. She can wait a few minutes more. She awaits me. As did I, for you appeared at my shore and entranced that young man with your charms. I must admit, I was smitten, wishing for it to be me. It was I that was entranced, and I will go now and await his return. You would dismiss a god who seeks nothing but a moment of your time in order to wait in on the list of empty promises. Even empty promises fill my heart with greater hope than whatever hell it is you offer. If you have a wife, you should return to her. Or perhaps I will take you into my kingdom, where you see the power of my flesh and you will love me in return. I would never love a man so callous. I am no mere man! You give to me a better plan. I will take you into the temple of Athena. Well, she will see that Poseidon bounce to no one! And I will take my victories as I see fit. You sent for me, Mother. Did I? I do not recall sending for you, but I'm glad you are home. You sent Hermes by Zeus's command to call for me. How do you not recall such a thing? Hermes? Oh, he is messenger to the gods. What audience would he have with me even if I requested it? Perhaps Zeus sent him. Seeing as I needed you to help me hang these decorations just a bit higher. Perhaps. <laughs> what are you decorating for? 
Polydectes is having a festival for all the nobles of the surrounding kingdoms. It will be a fantastic affair, and he has invited you to present you as a noble within his kingdom. I am not, and I have no wish to be a noble in his kingdom. You would do well to accept his generosity. It is all we have. It is not all I have. I have met a girl, mother, beautiful and charming, spirited and kind, and I have promised her a life of love, and I wish to keep it. But you met this flower on the shore of the sea. I did. And the fate spoke true. In any case, you should take great interest in Polydectes' offer. You will be given your own plot of land on which to live with any flower you wish to plant there. And in time, its seeds, a place to live out the promise you have made. I will consider it if I will be allowed to be my own man, free from his tyranny. Only then will I welcome it. He has done this as a favor to me in exchange for my hand in marriage. <laughs> I will see to it that you are left alone. Mother, you are well aware I do not condone this marriage. But if I cannot stop you from marrying this man, I will live alongside you to ever protect you in your time of need. Perseus, <laughs> you always were the light that shone down from the sky. I'm blessed. It is I that is blessed, Mother. Now then, let us hang these decorations higher than the faces of the goats, or we might find them eaten away by the morning. At what time will this party begin? It will begin in seven days and continue until all of the food from the hunt has been eaten. <laughs> seven days? But I have a promise to upkeep, and to continue eating and drinking and merrymaking until all the food and drink is exhausted. What sort of an affair is this? It is a small price to pay these few weeks to be a free and comfortable man. If this flower of yours is worth your life, she will wait patiently these few weeks for you to return. I will endure this pain now, so that I may ever appreciate my lady when I see her once again. My child, what has happened? I have been attacked. Attacked by whom? Give me a name and I will hunt them to their end. I cannot give you their name. You do not know it? What description of this stranger do you have? Not a stranger. If not a stranger, then give me a name. I will execute them at once for this crime. I'm afraid it is a name you know well. What devil has done this to you, my child? I demand to know. I've housed you and fed you. A little honesty would go a long way to repaying these debts. You will not want to hear. I have demanded to hear. It's by the sea, by the shore. I was alone. The sky was becoming dark. Then Poseidon must have seen. Alas, he did. Because it was he. <laughs> Did I not tell you to stay far from the sea? Look at you. This is what becomes of those incapable of listening. I did not mean it to happen. I was there gathering shells as gifts for you again for your hospitality. My hospitality, yes. How well that has been repaid, finding your way into my rival's arms. I did not do this. I was with another. With another? And what might his name be? Or do you not know that either without prodding? His name was Perseus. He was kind and beautiful. Perseus, my lowly half-brother. I'm certain if he knew of your ugly truth, he would not return for you. I am innocent of this crime. Poseidon took me against my will and, and ravished me despite my desperate cries. Look to him for shame in this tragedy! You, you foolish child! A god will have no shame in his dealings with a mortal child such as you. It is without a doubt you took sight of him and could not resist the temptation of a god. Many a mortal has wished for an affair with the gods and you are no different. But to do so inside the walls of my own temple is a crime I cannot forgive. Merciful goddess, I implore you, understand me! 
I have disputed your claims of my mercy from the beginning, yet you tested them all the same. You will suffer the fate of knowing you trampled on the faithful temple of Athena. You will be cursed to live a life alone, insured by a monstrous face that will turn the strongest men to stone. Oh, you will be known for all time as the third of the Gorgon sisters, each of them more horrid than the last. And you will be named Medusa, a name that will fall darkly off the tongues of many now living, and many more to come. It is with this fate that I curse you! No, no. has become of this once innocent child. I have labored day and night to heal the wounds bestowed upon me by the fates. But now this! How is anyone to love a monster such as this? I did everything asked of a woman, and yet I lay here cursed in this body with this hair of snakes. I was pretty and young with Perseus asking for my hand, but Poseidon, immoral and beyond judgment, had different plans. And waking in the temple, believing I would be protected, but Athena only has ears to hear what she wishes to be true. So if men shall speak my name in fear, it will be with good reason. Let them come to me. Let them come and see with their lust-filled eyes what has become of this innocent child. And with one look of my horrid face, let them turn to stone and decorate my lair for eternity. What of Perseus? What of the one man who only promised good and decent things and, and held me with the prospect of love in his eyes? What of him? What of him? Had I known him better, I would likely have been met with the truth. They are all of them the same. So if Perseus comes to avenge the monster Medusa for killing his adored sweet maiden Medi, then let him have the full effect of my hate for the world of men. And thus, will be spared from knowing what has actually become of her. Do not approach, Perseus! Keep your distance! That is your warning. <laughs> oh, 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 King Phaeetes! I'm King Rothgar from the North! I bring you something that you should treasure yourself. It is my finest sword from my finest smiths. I present it to you. Bye! Sorry, my lord. Mm. 
look, sir. Much gratuity to you and your family, sir. Some wine? Oh, thank you, sir. I must take my leave of you. Thank you. The goddess Athena sends me with a message of great haste, Polydectes. She requires your assistance in summoning the boy Perseus so he can slay the Gorgon Medusa. Medusa? Is that not the name of the monster that has killed a legion of men this very week? I'm told she turned into stone with just a gaze. These men were guests of mine, traveling the to this festival. Surely Perseus has no possibility of killing this beast. The gods are aware of the difficulty of the task. That's why they have each promised a gift to aid him in this quest. But why Perseus? He is a mere boy. What purpose do the gods have for him that I have not seen? In my travels, I have seen many things and spoke few secrets. But I can say there is some mischief to this request. Starting with a message sent from me from Poseidon to trick Perseus. So the gods wish to trick him further and ask my assistance. The boy has always been like a splinter deep below my skin. He knows that today he is the only man who has no gift to bring. So this will be the gift I seek. The gods surely do smile on Polydectes this day. If you say so, but beware of the gifts you seek. The gods rarely set one trap to trick one man at a time. Indeed. Here comes the boy now. Perseus! Perseus, I bring a message. Greetings, Hermes. A new message already. I'm still confused by your one from the other day. Message? I sent no message. Oh, you know of what I speak. You sent a message by Zeus's command, and I cannot confirm its source. Interesting. You must be mistaken. Must I? You must. That is my message. Perseus, as you may have seen, today was a day of gift giving. And each man has brought a horse we meet at my stable. I've not seen the horse you bring. Is it a great horse? You are well aware I do not own a horse of my own, much less an extra one to give. Well then, that is unexpected, isn't it? I imagine with the promise of land and unbridled freedom, you have respected my invitation and produce a horse. But as you have come unprepared, I do have a proposition for you. And what would that proposition be? The gods have sent Hermes here to find a challenger for the Gorgon Medusa. She has presented herself recently and slain many a traveler. It has become a horrible affair. <laughs> and you wish for me to be that challenge? Yes. Madness! It is unlikely a mortal such as myself can even harm one hair on her head. Oh! The hair on her head won't be a problem. Must you always speak in riddles? Snakes. She doesn't have hair. It's snakes. But I think it would interest you to know that a young maiden has been captured and taken into the cave of Medusa. The description matches the one I've seen you cuddling with on the beach. Medi, it, it can't be. I've only been held up here this one week. I knew I should not have lingered. It is true, Perseus. And among the dead are my guests. Save your maiden, kill the beast Medusa, and we will both be avenged. The gods demand it. I will save my maiden. And when we return, we will reside alone, far from the chaos of the gods. Do you intend on battling with your hands? The gods have each promised the gift to aid you on your quest. It would behoove you to accept them. And I am reminded that with every word, you are the trickster, unrelenting in my desperate hour. And yet the trickster brings gifts to aid you on the undertaking of your quest so you may not die. From Zeus, a sword made of adamantine, so that you may not die, but kill. From Hades, this helm of darkness, so that you may not die of being seen. From Athena, this polished shield, 
so that you may see the beast plainly before making the final blow, so that you may not- So that I may not die! Yes, thank you, Hermes! You really shouldn't take this lightly. From Hesperides, a sack to safely contain the head of Medusa, so you may not die upon looking at it. Last but not least, not a gift, but a loan. Take my winged shoes, so that you may not... So that I may not die! No, so you can get there faster. <laughs> I wish you all the best of luck, Perseus. May you have the maiden you seek. I am guided by love, so I cannot fail. I will delay no more. There is no end to what a fool will do for love. <laughs> <laughs> Those poor men, statues now, their faces frozen in terror. And my poor Medi, imprisoned by this beast. I must not dawdle in fear. She needs my protection now more than ever. I never thought I'd thank Hades for anything, but what a gift this cap of invisibility will be to aid me in this foreboding cave. Medi, it is I. Perseus, show yourself to me. Medi, it is I, Perseus. I have come to save you. So, the hero returns for his maiden. Show yourself to me, for I can hear you, but I cannot see your face in this darkness. Beast, you clearly have outwitted many men before me, but Perseus will not be so easily undone. Reveal yourself to me so that I may take vengeance upon you for those souls that you have taken. <laughs> Reveal myself. You may not like what you see. Before I end your miserable existence, direct me to the young maiden Medi, stolen from the temple of Athena. She is not yours to enslave. If I show you what has become of her, your heart will turn to stone against her far before your body falls as well. For the maiden that you seek <laughs> he came for me. And that's just true. Medi. Medi, no. This is not the promise I wish to keep. Polydectes, Poseidon, Hermes, no longer will God and man walk freely without looking out for my shadow. I'm sorry, Mitty. I must do what has to be done. Ah, the champion returns. I didn't think you'd make it out alive. Yes, and uh, here is my proof. Too slow, poor boy. I guess you have to exact your revenge elsewhere. But I must admit, it has been a fun adventure. Then it is Polydectes that I will visit next. Without your prized boots, you have no chance of stopping me. I have returned, Master. So you have. Have you accomplished the goal and saved your maiden? 
Yes, my maiden is safe. The fates surely do smile upon you, Perseus. Never will I ever imagine seeing you come back from this journey. And with the added luck of rescuing your mate. No! My maiden is safe in the underworld of Hades. Safely cross the river Styx. The same cannot be said for your heart and soul to be trapped in this marble slab for all eternity. Perseus? Perseus! Oh, Perseus, my son! You have returned. What has happened to Polydectes? He is as solid as stone! I'm afraid he was always stone in his heart, Mother. It seems now the illness has only completely consumed him. But what will I do now, Perseus? What will we do? I am Perseus, son of Zeus, champion of the people of Greece. The gods owe me a debt they cannot repay. We will reside on these lands together, and you will rule them with me, living never to be trapped in a cage again, living only to be free. Perseus, you always were the light that shone down from the sky. I am truly blessed. You will always be so blessed, Mother. I will see to it. Hades, the, the god himself and not a messenger, I, I don't understand. You have suffered enough for two lifetimes, all by my brothers and sisters. It is best I see you through myself. And what of payment to the boatman? I, I have nothing. You have no debts that have not already been paid. No more questions. Your soul should rest. We will speak of the revenges that are owed to you, all in due time. Good job.